Good morning! It's Monday! How are you doing today? How was your weekend? Well, I would like to share my weekend. My weekend was spent hosting the Successful Practice Summit and it was awesome. It's the first time I've brought some of these thought leaders together over the course of two days to pour into practitioners, business owners, people out there trying to grow their business, and it was amazing. I feel so grateful. Tap into the chat, please, something for which you are grateful. If you want to raise your frequency, your vibration, and have the most amazing life that is beyond your expectations and dreams, start with gratitude. So what are you grateful for? Type it into the chat. I'm going to start then you go. I am so grateful for the presenters who joined me this weekend. This weekend was amazing. I put it in the notes if you are like, what? What happened this weekend? What did I miss? I hosted a two-day summit called the Successful Practice Summit. There's so many nuggets in there. How to grow your business, how to hire a team, ways that you can make more money, Google reviews, search engine optimization, marketing made easy. So I'm going to start off the gratitude um, and please, please, please type into the chat. This will just raise the frequency all around, which is a pretty good thing, all right? Oh, by the way, welcome to Motivational Mondays with a Splash of Money because we can both, we can use a little bit of both. I'm Dr. East, and so I am beginning, if you're rolling in because you're like, eh, 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 it's Monday, what time is it? Uh, it's time for our motivation, and I have some tools. Uh, today's theme is story time. I have some stories that may just motivate you and lead to more money, all right? So it's totally in line, but what we're doing is we're starting with gratitude. So you're gonna type in what you're grateful for, and I'm gonna start with, I am grateful for the following mentors, coaches, consultants, and speakers that showed up this weekend on Friday and Saturday and gave it all. I mean, it is amazing. You can go in the link and take a look at the lineup of what they shared, okay? Jason Stein, Julie Bear, Don't Walk, Jeffrey Grossman, Chen Yen, Tanya Weber, Andy Rosenfarb, Chris Axelrad, Michelle Grasick, and Rebecca Ong, and myself, and my amazing and beautiful co-host, Gabrielle, uh, also, was here all weekend and we just poured into you. It was amazing and it was recorded. So for $47, you can get that recording. And this isn't an income claim, but you can easily make hundreds of thousands of dollars from what was shared over the weekend. All right, so that's what I'm starting with is a little gratitude. I'd love to know what you're grateful for. And um, let's move on to story time. All right, I've got some stories for you and the themes are threefold. I love three. And I am foreshadowing something that's coming up, something that has three in it. Stay tuned for that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna keep you waiting. What is it? You'll see, it's big and I'm super excited about it. And it's happening in about a week and a half. But the story time is three themes and it's don't give up. How many of you feel like you wanna give up? Type into the chat, give it up, don't do it. Send me a private message, east at dreast.com. And I will, if I can, talk you off the ledge. Don't give up, all right? We still have four months till the end of the year. You still have time to crush it, to use a word that's thrown around all too much at this time. But you still have time to turn your practice around, make extra money for Christmas. Oh, I said it. Oh, I said it. I went to Costco the other day and Christmas is everywhere. You're not stopping it, okay? So you still have time. So don't give up is one of my themes from my stories today. Impact. I want to bring awareness to the impact you have on the world because I'm pretty sure you're not even aware of it. So I wanna share some impact. And the third story theme is what's possible. So don't give up, impact, what's possible. Let's start with, in, let's start with don't give up. Years, years, years ago, I had the goal of running a marathon and I had never run more than like six, seven miles, maybe eight miles. So I started off and the first thing I did is I ran the 5K, then I did a half marathon and then I set out for that marathon, right? So I did the training for the marathon and um, 
in the middle of the training, guess what? I got sick. Oh no. So I was never able to do my 20 mile training run because I got sick. The most I had done is one time I ran 15 miles and I was scared and I thought maybe I shouldn't do this marathon and I said, nope, I'm not giving up. Uh, I started to think about under, under train, over rest, perform big on the day. So that's kind of what I just hoped for and said, I hope that I'm right with this. So instead of pushing myself through the sickness and doing the 20 miler, I just rested for two weeks went into the marathon and I finished it four hour, 10 minutes, something like that. And it was such a huge, big accomplishment. I didn't give up. Don't give up. Follow through. You know, I had hoped to get a 350 marathon. Okay. I didn't meet my goal of 350, but I completed it. So it's not always important that you finish the goal that you set out for. What's most important, if not crucial, is that you just finish, you just complete, just finish it. Focus and finish. Don't listen to the self-limiting beliefs like, uh, oh, nobody's going to care if I don't finish it. You will care. Your soul will care. You do it for yourself. You don't do it for anybody else. And I've got so many stories on that. I'll share those later, but I'm on with just leave with that one marathon story. I had a patient um, that came to me and um, she had one working ovary literally she had a history she was 38 years old she had a history of endometriosis she showed up for acupuncture and she said can you help me with fertility i said well let's determine we did the intake she had one ovary one was removed from endometriosis she had a scar from hip to hip and she said my doctor said there's no chance for me to have a baby i said well you still have an ovary you know i think you have a chance and she said, all the doctors said I need to adopt or do foster parenting, that it's not even possible for IVF because this one ovary is so weak. And this and that. I said, well, I'm going to hold a space that you're a mom and you do this naturally with your own eggs and that you do this with your one working ovary. So let's get that working ovary super strong. She's like, all right, right? She had even given up on herself. And I said, I am not going to give up on you. I've got you. I see you pregnant. I see you having a child. So she started acupuncture, and if you've worked in fertility, you know how this can be. Months go by, and lots of negative pregnancy tests go by, and they're coming in crying, and you're holding them, and you also start to waver a little bit like, is this even possible? So we have to not give up on our patients. So I said, stick through it, stick to it, stick to the plan, month after month, negative pregnancy test after negative pregnancy test. We started to see small shifts with her. Her period started to regulate. The pain started to go away. Uh, she was able to see mucus in her, um, her cycle. Everyone's like, that's TMI. I'm here for motivation. Regardless of all of it, the truth is, eight months with working with me, she showed up with a positive pregnancy test. And that woman has a nine-year-old son at this time. Also, when she got pregnant, she went to her doctor and says, I'm pregnant. The doctor told her, you're probably going to miscarry. Don't get excited. She came to me crying. I said, don't listen to any of that. Don't listen to any of that. So don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your patients. You're probably their last chance. You're their last resort. Everybody else has given up on your patients, but you, including themselves. So that is the impact you have on people. Do you realize the impact that you have on people? Do you even realize because of you, people have babies. People golf again. People remove migraines and are able to go back to work. They're not in pain anymore. I mean, all the many things. And if you're not in acupuncture, I'm pretty sure you're touching other people's lives. And if you just work on yourself to raise your own frequency, to re raise your own mood. That alone is enough to have a strong impact on the world, the ripple effect, the butterfly effect, all the many things, right? So let's talk impact. Years ago, a 17-year-old boy was referred to me because they were about to start shock therapy on this boy. And I was the last resort because it couldn't hurt to go see an acupuncturist or a doctor of Chinese medicine. So this boy walks in and he's dressed all in black. His hair looks like it hadn't been washed. It was kind of greasy and he, his shen, that's a term of Chinese medicine, just kind of like his energy, his appearance, you know, just his presentation of his, of the whole being there was just shut down. He walked in my office, hunched shoulders and face down because everybody had given up on him, right? But I'm on impact 
theory or theme right now. So 17 year old, he is scheduled for shock therapy. I'm his last chance. And so he walks in, can't even look him in the eyes, all dressed in black. And I work with him. I talked to him a little bit about how Chinese medicine works in the body and that I am going to hold a space for him. And I looked at, made sure I hold it, touched his hand at a certain point and had him look in the eye. I said, can you look at me for a moment? I said, I see you and I'm here for you. Give me four sessions. That's all I ask. If you, if you still don't feel better after four sessions, then, you know, we can always do shock therapy if that's what we think is appropriate. But are you with me? Can we do four sessions once a week? Just come in and see me and report the news back on how this is landing with you. I gave him some herbs and supplements and I did a session with him. Okay, came back the second week and his hair had been washed and he was kind of looking up a little bit and looking around my office. He's waking up. It was like, I remember when he walked in my office, it brings me to tears even today. And he had black jeans, but he had kind of a colorful band t-shirt on like Rush or Led Zeppelin or something like that. So now he's kind of engaged with me and I did the session with him and he asked a couple questions about some of the supplements that I prescribed. Then he came back the third week. Now he's in blue jeans, a white t-shirt. His hair is not only washed, it has highlights in it. And he's talking about how he got his band back together and they're going to continue playing music. The fourth session, the guy's off the charts. This is just four weeks. He's like, oh, shock therapy. I don't need shock therapy. I just needed you. And again, I'm not taking credit for this. I'm grateful that God allowed me to be a vessel of his healing himself. But I mean, guys, this is the impact. This is the impact we're all having. 10 years later, this is a true story. It was 10, I've always remembered this kid. I mean, seriously, and his prescribed, the, the psychotherapist that referred him to me was so impressed that she started coming to see me for years. And she sent me all of her tough cases. And I had a little bit of a specialty around this because it chose me. I just was successful in it and effective. But what an impact. You're all doing the same thing. I know it. So 10 years later, this kid, I'm at Barnes and Noble and I hear my name, East, East. And I'm like, who is it? And it's the kid. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I hugged him. And I'm like, how are you? He's like, oh my God, I'm phenomenal. After you, I went to school to be a, a helicopter pilot and I'm a pilot and I'm getting my pilot's license and I'm going to fly for this big airline. And he's like, thank you so much. And I mean, seriously, you guys, I, I'm almost... I am holding back the tears because I went home that night and I was like, this is my life. Like I get to have this impact with people and I know you can relate to this. And coincidentally, around the time of him running into me 10 years later, I was kind of wondering if I should give up on this profession. Isn't God awesome? <laughs> Isn't it amazing how the universe gives you just what you need? So don't give up. Don't give up. This is your wake up call to not give up. All right. Another impact story is Tony Robbins. Now you don't have to like Tony Robbins to like this story. And this was told from Tony Robbins. So I'm not making it up. You can look it up. He told this in a podcast and I was like, wow, Tony Robbins was um, having brain fog, believe it or not. He's like so sharp, but even he was like, oh my gosh, my back hurts really bad. I don't understand what's going on. My knees, everything hurts. Everything hurts. I have this brain fog. This isn't like me. I don't know. He went to expert after expert and he's Tony Robbins. He, have ac he has access to the experts of all experts. And they were like, surgery, this, you can't work anymore. You got to give up. And he's like, nope, 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 nope. Not giving up. Nope. I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. Nope. I'm going to keep searching. And he was getting a routine blood test that one of his physicians had ordered. And he was talking with the phlebotomist. And the phlebotomist was like, oh, Tony, you know, what's interesting. Did anybody ever test you for heavy metal poisoning? And he's like, what is that? What are you talking about? No, I, I don't think I've been tested. And so the guy asked Tony about his lifestyle. Tony's like, I eat so clean. I don't drink. I don't smoke. No drugs, of course. But it's like I eat, you know, fish and fresh vegetables and I do colonics. And the guy's like, ah, fish. You eat a lot of sushi, a lot of fish. There's a lot of mercury, especially in, in our deep sea fish. And Tony's like, what? Like nobody, none of the experts even thought to check for heavy metal poisoning. They checked Tony Robbins and he was off the charts for mercury poisoning to the point where they're like, we don't even know how you're standing. 
Like you are beyond the death rate of mercury poisoning. And he's like, well, I'm Tony Robbins, right? So he did a chelation therapy. He went and found a center that specializes in detoxifying the heavy metals. How does this relate to you? You are that detective half the time. And I'm not putting anybody down or his experts or those specialists because they're really good at their lanes. But there's so many people in all these lanes and there's a lot of things that fall through the cracks of the lanes. And I feel in Chinese medicine, a lot of times we are those heroes, unsung, that find out those things, right? And just sit in the fact of knowing that you have such a strong impact on the world. Don't worry to get the accolades or or the you know recognition, just know you're having those kinds of impacts. Okay, number three, what's possible? The theme of this story is what's possible. I had a client come to me and she was frustrated that she would see patients, one here, one there, they'd come in and then two weeks, would they'd feel really good after the session and then two weeks would go by and they'd come in. They weren't consistent and she really just couldn't stand that anymore. And so I said, well, don't offer it anymore. Just offer a program, offer like, listen, if you wanna work with me, I'll bring you up to holistic health, but you need to see me every week for 10 weeks and this is how it works. And this is my program, this is what it costs. And I will hold a space for you, you commit to me. Um, she loved to do fertility, so she did the same thing. You know, I have a fertility program. You come in once a week. And so she's like, can I do that? I said, absolutely. It's your practice. It's your sandbox, right? So she, she shifted everything. She went from offering single sessions, like the initial and a follow-up, to programs. She offers three programs, holistic health, holistic fertility, holistic cosmetics. That was it. And in a month, she almost doubled her income by doing that. And... She is so sad, like beyond satisfied with her practice now because she loved when she could see somebody transform from consecutive and consistent treatments with her. So by not giving them the option of coming in once here and once in three months, she now gets to see these huge breakthroughs with her patients. She's actually leading her practice more effectively and she's making more money. What also is possible? I had a, a, another client who was constantly repeating the same thing to her patients, right? She had a detox program. And so she would have about six people a week go through the detox program. And she would spend a long time in her practice explaining how to go through the detox program. So she created a detox program, official like product. She recorded herself saying all those things one more time. And then she created a digital product of that detox program. So now in her practice, she what's interesting is by digitizing it, making it easy on her, she now is selling double that. So in a week, she'll sell 10 of those detox programs. It doesn't take any of her time. And in 90 days from making that program, she made $6,000. So she came to one of my two-day intensives. We created her program. She paid $1,500 to make $6,000 in 90 days. And in the next four months, she's probably gonna make an additional 50 grand just on that and not doing much with that. She doesn't have to support a digital product much. She says it once, it's recorded, they buy it, she wakes up, she's like, oh, four people bought my program last night, okay? This is all possible and so much more. All of these things are so, so possible for you that I would offer you a lot of times that you are getting in your own way of what's possible by telling yourself that's not possible, come to me and I'll tell you it is possible. And so much more. That's so fun with life. Life is a big fun game if you wanna play it that way. So you kind of just keep seeing, is this possible? Is that possible? It was, oh my gosh, how high can I go? What kind of an impact can I have on the world? Don't settle for it's okay, I'm okay. What, what? <laughs> I remember looking down when I was 19 and I wasn't very athletic and I'm looking down at this six foot tall figure that's really strong. I'm just like was given the gift of like these strong legs and the strong body and I'm like, why am I not running or using this physical body that God gave me? Like, oh my gosh. And that's when I started running and doing all the things and, and appreciating the gifts that I was giving and using them. I've helped a lot of people run marathons ask my friends like that's been such a joy for me and that kind of weaves into what is always back here that is god gave you gifts and your mission is to share them with the world i learned how to run a marathon and i didn't give up and then i went and i taught countless people 
to do the exact same thing. My very best friends, I have literally crossed the finish line with them. Ask them. And I'll tell you, at a mile 23, they're like, I don't want to do it easy. You just go on. I'm like, I ain't going anywhere. I'm finishing this marathon with you. Like, you know, we're finishing this thing. And uh, what a joy that has been. So if these stories have been fun for you, this is also a great reminder that stories are powerful. Add them to your marketing. Add them to your courses and programs. Add them to your practice. Tell stories to your patients of other successful outcomes that you've had around their condition. I remember when I was trying to get pregnant in my 40s, I loved hearing stories of women in their 40s getting pregnant. It gave me hope. It made me keep going on. So share your stories. Share them in your marketing. When you tell a story, speak from your heart. People will feel it. And I'm going to leave with the, one of my favorite quotes from Maya Angelou, which is, people don't always remember what you told them, but they remember how they felt in your presence. So go out there, have an awesome week, and stay in touch with me. And I'll see you here next Monday, 8.30 for Motivational Mondays with a splash or more of money. Bye. Love you guys.